I'm Peg Breen from the New York Landmarks Conservancy. We're at the birthplace of President Theodore Roosevelt for another tourist in your own town excursion. Roosevelt was born on East 20th Street in Manhattan in 1858. He lived here until he was 15 when the family moved uptown. The original house was demolished, but it was replicated in 1923 after Roosevelt's death by the Women's Roosevelt Memorial Association. The house was modeled after a twin of the original by Theodate Pope Riddle, one of America's earliest female architects. The facade has a mix of elements. The drip moldings around the doorway and windows signal Gothic revival. The mansard roof introduces the Second Empire style. The design also incorporated a museum. It's an individual city landmark and national historic site. The city's designation report calls out the full-length drawing room windows and handsome cast iron balcony. It says the house exudes a quiet air of restrained dignity. The president's widow, Edith, and his sisters, Anna and Corinne, supplied information on the original interior and donated many family furnishings. In his autobiography, Roosevelt said he loved the glass chandelier in the front parlor and even hid a prism which fell from it. He lamented the black hair cloth furniture, which scratched his legs. A photo shows a young Roosevelt standing beside a chair, which is exhibited today. Roosevelt described the library in his day as having gloomy respectability. In these rooms, Roosevelt absorbed the family legacy of treating people fairly and of public service. And it was here as a sickly child that he began building up his physical strength to improve his health, a practice which carried him through years of demanding public service and strenuous outdoor physical activity. The National Park Service runs the site and offers regular public tours of the rooms. The adjacent museum traces the history of the Roosevelt family, has mementos of Roosevelt's various public and elected offices, and even displays the shirt he was wearing in 1912 when he was shot in an attempted assassination. Theodore Roosevelt went on to other homes, but let's hear it for all the women who made it possible for the rest of us to experience where TR's wide-ranging legacy began. The great fundamental issue now before our people can be stated briefly. It is, are the American people fit to govern themselves, to rule themselves, to control themselves? I believe they are. My opponents do not. I believe in the right of the people to rule. I believe that the majority of the plain people of the United States will day in and day out make fewer mistakes in governing themselves than any smaller class or body of men, no matter what their training, will make in trying to govern them. I believe again that the American people are as a whole capable of self-control and of learning by their mistakes. I am not leading this fight as a matter of aesthetic pleasure. I am leading because somebody must lead or else the fight would not be made at all. 